today I'm going to do a quick video on this uh, Citrix branch repeater. Um, on the bottom it says it's the WAN Scaler 5300 and also the WAN Scaler 8300. So I don't know what the actual model of this thing is. Uh, I believe it's also called the Branch Repeater 300. So your guess is as good as mine as to what the actual name is. Um, it comes in a 1U case. It normally has uh, proper wear uh, rack mount uh, tabs, but they're, I took them off. Uh, I've been in this case a few times and I've swapped out the drive and all sorts of stuff, so I'll try and point out all the differences from how it actually arrived. Uh, the first difference is uh, it normally comes with a green LCD. This is actually a uh, Crystal Fonts uh, CFA635, I believe, uh, with the USB module. So it just plugs into a USB port and programs like um, LCD proc and whatnot can access it. Uh, you're, if you're running PFSense or something for your router, it will give you nice little bits of information. I took the USB one out and put it into my actual router. So uh, this is a slightly different model with a red screen and stuff, but it looks the same. It's got the nice button controls. Uh, on the front there's two uh, intake fans, these are 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter. Uh, all three fans inside this unit are PWM controlled, which is quite nice. This is the inside of the unit. Uh, obviously the hard drive is not the same as the original because Hitachi doesn't make drives in this the ice pack thing from Western Digital. I just happen to have that sitting around. Uh, normally there's a USB cable that runs from the display over to the motherboard, but like I said earlier, I swapped it out. Uh, the actual case design is, is quite clean. Uh, there's a nice um, set of cooling uh, shrouds here. Although, I, actually, I think it's just the one shroud. I thought it was made in two parts. But there's a nice shroud over the very, very, very nice copper heat sink. Uh, the motherboard is a, a Supermicro PDS-BM-LN2+. Uh, it's a basic um, Intel 946 uh, GZ chipset motherboard. Uh, it doesn't support uh, ECC memory, which is kind of a limitation if you want to use this for um, free NAS or something because uh, ECC memory is very important to uh, ZFS file systems. Uh, the motherboard supports up to 4 gigs. Uh, the, this model actually ships with 4 gigs to 2 gig sticks, actually branded with Supermicro on the other side. Um, the processor itself is a, a dual core Pentium series, but it's one of the newer ones that's actually based on like the core micro architecture, so it's not terrible. Um, it says it supports 3000 series Xeons. It's not specific on what ones it actually supports, so uh, looking around, you can get a 65 watt dual 2.66 gigahertz, uh, the Xeon 3070. Uh, that seems to be the fastest, just straight 3000 series. There's also the L3110. Uh, uh, it's a dual core 3 gigahertz, and it uses only 45 watts of power, so that's the lowest power one available that I can see that's uh, actually fast. Um, there's also an E3110, which seems to be the exact same thing, except it's at 65 watts instead of 45. I don't know if they're supported or not. Because, like I said, it's not it's not clear on what processors it actually specifically supports. This is the expansion card slot. Uh, as you can see, it uses one of the nicer little single screw clamp style arrangements. And these work really well to hold in the cards. Uh, the only catch is mine actually got dented. Uh, it just came that way. So this is actually quite a pain to disconnect and put back in. Uh, you really have to jam it in because it's all right here is bent. Another issue with this expansion card is that they've put a nice fan right in front of it, which is very good to cool a card, but the fan prevents you from actually properly just taking out the card. Uh, you can kind of fight it out by pull, pulling out the riser board, but realistically you've got to unscrew the hard drive, which takes off this plate, 
which takes the fan out. So you have to remove the hard drive, the fan, then the card, which is kind of annoying. Uh, the card itself, uh, the card slot, I should say, is um, a four times PCIe slot. It is a physical eight connector though, but it's it's actually only a times four uh, interface electrically. There's also um, PCI. You need a different riser for that. This one doesn't come with it. If you take this out of the case and put it into a regular desktop case, you can remove the riser and it will work vertically normally. So if you want to put this into a, a, another case, you, you can. Uh, there are some Supermicro models that specifically say you can only use the riser. I'm guessing it's a different electrical connection. This one I didn't find any warnings on. I haven't actually tried it, but it should work just fine putting it vertically. Originally this came very nicely strapped down and all the wires were neatly organized so I have to give them credit for that. I do hate the hard drive mounting because when you take the hard drive out you have to run the screws through a plate at the bottom. Not this thing, this is just part of the drive I'm using. But you have to run it through a plate at the bottom so you have to get everything to line up and it's just a real pain. Uh, originally this came with a 250 gig Western Digital RE3 or RE2 server drive. Uh, it was actually broken, but still under warranty. The, the server drives come with five-year warranties, so I was able to send that in. And uh, I actually have it on eBay, the replacement. They sent me a 500 gig one back, which was pretty nice of them. One limitation of this board is that the processor pulls quite a bit of power. Even with no hard drive and just the fans, uh, this unit pulls around 55 watts which realistically is much too much power to sit here 24 hours a day as a router if that's what you're thinking. The processor itself is a, um, a dual core Pentium. It's the E2160, which is a dual core 1.8 gigahertz uh, Pentium. Now that I took off the heatsink, you can get a look at how nice the quality is. It's a very heavy passive copper heatsink with nice captive screws and a really really nice set of heat pipes to transfer all the heat away from the uh, actual CPU. Uh, I cleaned this one up using a bit of alcohol. This stuff works really well. I get this stuff off Amazon. It's about 10 bucks and it comes in a nice uh, aerosol spray. And you just wipe it down with the tissue paper. That'll all dissolve or um, evaporate. And yeah, this is, a, this is one of the nicest passive heat sinks I've seen in a in a rack mount device. Uh, unfortunately it is passive so if you're moving it to a desktop case you can't really use this unless you get one of the really low power chips. This is probably good enough to keep one of the lower power uh, Pentiums uh, cool enough to run. Once you unscrew the four screws holding the hard drive in you can disconnect it and pull it out. Uh, that also lets this whole plate move and unfortunately you kind of have to like fight with it a little bit to get it out and this has one of the cooling fans it's pointed directly at the uh, the network card in this case uh, the Molex connector is nicely strapped down and once we get that out of the way you can pull out the network card uh, this comes standard with it this is a, an interface masters uh, 2265 I believe uh, this is a dual gigabit uh, Intel card that much like the uh, some of the older videos I believe it's in the the blue coat that this has relays to swap out uh, to short out the two uh, Ethernet ports so if there's a, a power failure or something or um, some kind of software glitch this big cap can switch over all the relays and effectively remove this device from the network so that the network can continue on just without any of the features that the server provides. Uh, speaking of server, uh, this also comes with um, a Windows Server 2003 certificate of uh, authenticity I believe. Uh, it's a 32-bit copy. There's also like an ISA 32-bit embedded uh, COA on the bottom. Uh, they're both just on the case. Uh, the actual drive that I got with this thing did have them installed. 
but the uh, the drive was all blank. This thing was actually not used at all. Uh, the the hard drive itself only had like six hours of use on it, so it was essentially a new unit. The power supply in this is a pretty standard one U rack uh, power supply. It has a single fan at the top. This one's actually Super Micro branded. Uh, it's a PWS PWS dash. Uh, 201-1H. It's a uh, 200 watt. Uh, this one has the 8 pin 12 volt power connector. A lot of power supplies only have the 4, especially the older ones. The three fans are all the same model. They're all Nidec Ultra Flows. I didn't, there's a really teeny tiny model number in there. I can't be bothered to look up. But these two blow directly onto the processor and as you've seen before there's a third one that covers the, uh, the expansion slot. Uh, they're all quite loud, especially when uh, the system first boots up and the um, PWM hasn't kicked on. But it is nice to see an actual 4-pin PWM uh, fan in a rack mount case. Usually these are just 3-pin and usually they run full power all the time. And they're loud as hell.